Good evening. Good evening. Okay, if you have some trouble uh, listening the audio, you can tell me because with the other group, I have some trouble uh, because of the system or I don't know what, what's happening. But now I think I, I will fix it. But if you have some trouble, you can tell me and I will try to uh, fix Again, the with the audience. Okay. Thank you. So now we are in the last week. Oh my God, we are almost ending at this course. So we are in the session number four, uh, one of this week number four. So we have, you know, this one, we are going to have three more sessions in which we are going to complete this course. And now we are going to begin in because it's time to begin learning something new. So we are going to see the uh, first for today. So let me see, I'm going to share with you the document in which we are writing uh, all the information that we need to know about the topics that we are going to develop in this course because we are almost ending and we have a lot of information in that document. So we have the phrase that it says, if you get tired, learn to rest, not to quit. And that kind of, um, it's a phrase that we need to put into action in our lives because Sometimes when we are doing something, uh, we feel very tired, very stressed. And we think that if we are not doing that action anymore, we are going to Oh, wow. It was unexpected. I'm here again. So, I think it's because it's raining right now. So, okay. It will be a very long session, I guess, because of the rain and because of the sound and because of the internet. I'm so sorry for that. So I was saying that sometimes we think that if we um, we are not doing all the action that makes us feel tired, we are going to find peace. But it's something that is not true because we need to know um, when it's necessary to get a good rest without the cell phone, without all the problems. Uh, without the sun of the city and to gain all the energy that we need to perform all the activities that we need to do to uh, gather all the things that we are going to have for our future. So, for today we have a um, topic that is talking about sense or time. In this case, we are going to talk about something about grammar. And we are going to talk about the present continuous. That is the topic for today. The present continuous. But I have like, I have an exercise for you uh, about reading, but I'm going to do it later. Just I'm going to explain uh, all the information that I have for you about the present continuous, and then we are going to have this exercise in which you are going to read, and then I'm going to ask. But in this case, we are going to begin with the present continuous. So, in this case, it says that the present continuous, that is also called progressive or present progressive, 
uh, it's a verb tense which is used to show that an ongoing action is happening now, either at the moment of a speech or now in a large sense. The present continuous can also be used to show that an action is going to take place in the near future. And we are going to have some description, examples, and all of the things that we need to know about the present continuous. The first thing is, Vamos a utilizar el presente continuo para hablar de acciones que se están llevando a cabo, ya sea en el momento en que nosotros estamos hablando o en eh, un futuro muy, muy, muy cercano. Eh, o oh, estamos hablando ¿verdad? de una acción en un sentido un poco más extenso. Dice que también eh, puede mostrar, ¿verdad?, que una acción está tomando lugar en un futuro muy cercano, eh, pero sin pasarnos, ¿verdad? Allá a un futuro lejano. Recuerden que el futuro es algo incierto. En este caso es algo que sí está pasando o que sí va a pasar, pero que estamos absolutamente seguros de que va a pasar. So, we have the uh, specification for this topic. This one is also called certain progressive. It's a version which is used to show that. Now, at the moment of the speech, or now in a large sense, large sense. Present and also the years to show that an action in the near future. So, we're going to see the present continuous form. And we are going to say that we have like the present continuous form using Am is R plus the present participle. Questions are indicated by inverting the subject and am is R and the negative are made with not. That is very simple because we know the structure is almost the same for all the senses. So in that case, it's just, we are going to change some details about the sentences that are in positive, in negative, and in question form, but um, the base or the structure is almost the same. If the form we have seen um, is an R plus the present participle. So, 
So in this case, what we are using is the uh, present continuous. In this case, we are going to change the form of the verb because we are going to use the ing form of the verb. So in that case, we are going to uh, add ing at the end of the verb that we are using. So in that case, we are creating the present function. Are indicated by inversion the subject and um is an R and negative are made with not. So we have here the um, the structure. We have the passive one. And we have the structure that is like this. We are going to write an example. In this case, you are going to see the construction of the sentence. That is very, very simple. We have the subject. Then we have the verb to be, you are. And then we have the verb that in which we are using the ing. You are watching TV. Let me see. Um, okay. ¿Alguien más tiene problemas para escuchar? Sí, teacher, se oye algo entrecortado. Okay. Eh, I'm asking because I have uh, this same problem. Estoy preguntando porque yo tuve este problema con la, eh, con la sesión anterior que no se escuchaba bien. Entonces, no sé. Um, let me see. I will change. Ajá. Voy, a, voy a cambiar, voy a dejar esto, si voy a utilizar el audio de la computadora para ver si ya se arregló. So give me a second. I found the problem. Ah, you can see anything. Alguien más no puede ver la cámara porque creo que ya me escucha.
Então, no sé si es mi conexión internet, pero todo está en negro. I think we are having trouble. Creo que estamos teniendo un poco de problemas, pero no sé si será por el internet o es el sistema en sí, porque con el otro grupo también tuve problemas con, con eh, la sesión. Ahí sí ya se escucha Creo mejor. Internet. Okay, I, we are going to. Vamos a tratar, vamos a tratar de. de... Okay, thank you. Gracias, gracias, gracias. Vamos a tratar de continuar. Si seguimos teniendo problemas con el audio, me vuelven a avisar. Eh, because I don't know what is happening with uh, the audio. And if you have troubles with uh, the image, uh, we can also say, I don't know if you are saying uh, the uh, screen. Edwin. You are back. I can see you now. Oh, okay, okay. That's good. Okay, we are going to continue now. We are having just a lot of trouble this week, I mean. So, in this case, we are saying that, oh, I have this one. Okay. So, I was saying that we have the same kind of formula with the other uh, sentence. So, in this case, I'm showing you some examples of this structure. For the positive one, you have the subject, that is the uh, pronoun. Then we have the verb be. And then we have the verb with the ing form. In this case, we are going to work with that kind of verb, in which we are going to ask the ing form. I mean, yes, I know that I have about problem with So, I think it's, um, it's part of my internet, the problem that I am having, because I have this problem five with the internet connection. So, we're going to continue. I'm so sorry for that. So we are going to try, we are going to try to have the session. But if I am having troubles with the internet, I will turn on my camera. Just in some cases, it, it works. But for the moment, we are going to continue like this. So then we are going to have the question or the statement in this case this is the question or the interrogative sentence and it says in this case we are going to change the verb to be because we are using the verb to be are you watching are you watching to be and then for the negative one, we have, you are not watching TV. Okay. So it's kind of simple to use this kind of a uh, sentence, because in this case it's like, uh, something that we were working before, and it's not like kind of complicated. But we are going to have some examples of this construction with all the pronouns. And uh, we are going to have the affirmative, the negative, the question with all of the pronouns that we have in English. So we are going to have this table in which we are going to write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I 
29 of this one because we're going to write the example. So in the first one, we have the positive. Then we have the negative one. And then we have the question. So I'm going to write all the subjects that we have. I, you, he, she, is, we, and they. So I have one extra. So for the uh, complement of uh, the uh, structure of the sentence, we are going to use the verb speak. So in this case, we are going to write all the examples with the verb speak. So I am speaking. You are speaking. He is speaking. She is speaking. It is her speaking. We are her speaking and they are is speaking. So we have the positive one. Now we are going to have the negative that in this case we know that we just need to add the not to this sentence to make it negative. So again, I, you, he, she, is, we, and a they. Again, the verb to be, um, in this case, negative, not speaking. Who are not speaking. He is not speaking. She is not. He is not. And we are not. So in this case, it's not complicated. You know that we are using the verb to be, but it's the limit that we need to use the rule for the third person when we are using a he, she, it. In this case, we are not going to use the verb like we are not going to change the form. In this case, we are going to use the verb with the ing form for all of the subjects that we have. Now, for the question, we are going to change the places of the word. So in this case, we are going to use the uh, verb to be at the beginning of the statement. So we are going to begin, am I speaking? Are you speaking? Then is he speaking? Is he speaking? Is it speaking? Are we? The and are they? So for that, um, so the case is not a really complicated to use the continuous of the verb because in this case we are seeing and that uh, we are just adding the ing. To the verbs, and in that case, we are talking about that. Uh, we are talking about actions that are um, going to happen in a short time, or that are happening right now. So that is very, very simple. So we are going to talk about the uses. We have different uses for this structure. Use it. And we have use number one. 
And it says now. But something is happening now. At this very moment. moment. It can also be used to show something is, is not happening now. So in this case, we have the use number one, that is now. And it says that use the present continuous with normal verbs. So when we are reading the information and we see normal verbs, what is the meaning of normal verbs? It, it has that we can find abnormal uh, verbs or something different. We're going to see what are the normal verbs and what why we call that category like that. But in this case, we're going to continue with this, and then we are going to talk about the normal verbs. So we're going to use normal verbs to express the idea that something is happening now, at this very moment, in this very moment that we are right now. It can also be used to tell that something is not happening now. In that case, we're talking about that positive and negative uh, connotation. So, for example, it, it is raining uh, right now. Está lloviendo en este momento. In this very moment. So, we have the example. And we have example number one. Let's see. Have this one. You are learning English right now or now you are learning english now then we have you are not swimming now you are not swimming now Then we have another one, it is a question, and it says, are you sleeping? So in this case, we're not talking about the feeling, are you sleeping, because we are sleeping in some cases. In this case, it's the action of sleep. So in this case, it's asking if we are sleeping. So. We are not sleeping. We are sleeping. That is something as different. I am sitting. Another one. I am not standing. Another one. Is he sitting or standing? Another one, they are reading their book. They are not watching television. Then we have, what are you doing? And the last one, why aren't you doing your homework? So we have some examples in this case. 
to talk about the time, because in this case, we are going to talk about actions that are happening right now. And also we are going to talk about uh, actions that are not happening. And you can see in the examples, we have like a, one action that we are doing and one action we are not doing, for example. And uh, I am sitting, it's like the taller one because we are sitting. We are not extending. In some cases, maybe some of you are extending, but it is like the example. Para el primer uso, que se llama ahora, eh, sabemos que estamos utilizando este tiempo o esta estructura eh, para, o se utiliza con los verbos normales, que ya vamos a ver estas definiciones de verbos normales, eh, para expresar una idea de que algo está sucediendo en este momento, en este preciso momento en el que estamos. También podemos utilizarlo para mostrar que algo no está pasando ahora. Si ya hablamos de una cosa que está pasando en este momento, pues también podemos mostrar una cosa que no está pasando, porque es obvio que está pasando otra diferente. So, now we are going to see the, uh, the expression normal verbs. What are the normal verbs? And if we have other type of verbs that we maybe don't know, uh, we have Group no, number one, that is normal verb. Then we have group number two, that is non-continuous verb. And we have group number three, there are mixed verbs. And I think we just have three different types of verbs. So, we are going to see the, um, the difference between these three types. So we are going to know what are the normal verbs in this case. So we are going to um, have like, uh, we are going to stop for a moment, uh, explaining the uses of the present continuous, but we are going to learn what are the different types of verbs that we have but in this case, we have three different groups. In this case, is not talking about regular and irregular verbs and all of the things. It's talking about a different thing. So we are going to talk about types of verbs. Because we are going to explain this one that is the normal verb. This one. And we are going to have this with the same color. So, it says, it, it is extremely important that you understand that not all English words are the same. English words are divided into three groups. The normal verbs, non continuous verbs, and mixed verbs. So we have three big groups of verbs. So it is saying that we um, need to understand that the verbs are not the same. Not all the English verbs are the same. We have normal verbs, non continuous verbs, and 
And the third one, that is mixed verb. So we are going to start with the number one, that is group one, normal verb. So what are the normal verbs? Most verbs are normal verbs. These verbs are usually physical actions, which you can see somebody doing. These verbs can be used in all tenses. So, para el grupo normal, que nosotros llamamos normal, eh, dice que son aquellos verbos que usualmente tienen que ver con acciones físicas que podemos eh, ver a alguna persona hacer. Quiere decir que es algo que nosotros podemos percibir que alguien está haciendo y que tiene que ver con el físico. Y que esto pero podemos utilizarlo con todos los tiempos. So, we are going to see some of these uh, verbs that we can use with all tenses. So we have here. This is action. If you can see somebody doing. This verb can be used in all senses. So we have a sample. And we have, let me see, we have to run, to walk, to eat, fly, to go, to say, coach, and so on. So in this case, remember that we are saying that in this case, uh, we are using this kind of verb that we can see uh, other uh, people doing. Um, and in this case, it's something physical. In this case, we have to run. We can see someone uh, running. So it's a physical action that someone is doing. Then we have walk. Also, we can see someone that is walking, eating. It's a physical action. We are going to have some examples like in sentence with this kind of um, verb. I will have, I eat dinner every day. And for the structure, um, for the structure that we are going, or that we are uh, learning by right now, uh, we are going to have the same sentence with uh, the ING form. I am eating dinner now. In this case, 
I eat dinner every day, and then with the structure, I am eating dinner right now. So the group number two. Group number two, we have non-continuous verbs. And in this case, it says that the second group called non-continuous verbs is smaller. These verbs are usually things you cannot see somebody doing. These verbs are rarely used in continuous sense. So in this case, uh, we are saying that uh, we are going not to see someone doing this action. And they are called non-continuous because it is not common to use with this structure of the continuous. So for that reason, um, it's that it is called non-continuous words. Somebody doing in continuous sentences. And we have the examples of the verb. We have to be, and in this case, we are not saying that we are not going to use the verb to be um, like we are doing in the structure, because in that case, it is not the main verb that we are using. Um, like we are saying, you are doing. In that case, it's not like we are using the verb to be as a main verb. In that case, it's like an auxiliary. We are talking about a team member. In that case, we are not going to use the verb to be because we are not going to see, or we are not going to say, uh, I, in that case, we are not going to change that part of the verb. And the being is another thing. To be, to one, to seem, So in this case, I'm going to write it like a list because it's easier. The theme, the need, prefer, to contain, to owe, and to assist. And in this case, these ones are, are called abstract verbs. Abstract verbs. Then we have possession verbs. In which we have this example. We have the process to own and to belong. 
Then we have a motion verb. In which we have the following examples. To like, to love, to hate, to dislike, to fear, to envy, and to mind. And we have the phrases. We are going to have the correct and the incorrect one, and we are going to have two sentences. For the first one, we have he is needing that need in this case is an abstract. We can say here in this case it's an abstract verb, so we are going not to use for the ing form. So in this case we have he's needing help now. This one is incorrect. And then we have the color one that says he needs that is in present. He needs help now. And this one is correct. Then we have another example that it says he is wanting. A drink now. But again, this one is incorrect. One in this case, again, is an abstract verb. And the correct form for this verb is the one. Again, in the present, who wants to drink now? And we have the group number three. But are the mixed verbs? This one, it says that the third group called mixed birds is the smallest group. This birds have more than one meaning. In a way, its meaning is a unique bird. Some meanings behave like non-continuous verbs, while other meanings behave like normal birds. So in this case, we're saying that we can have different meaning for this kind of verbs. In some cases, we are going to have um, non-continuous verbs, and in other ways, we are going to have like normal verbs. Para este último, que se llaman verbos mixtos, es que los significados son diferentes, y un significado puede ser un non-continuous verb, y el otro significado puede ser un verbo normal. Dependiendo, ¿verdad?, del contexto en el que lo utilicemos.
So in this case, we have the example for the mixed verb. And in this one, we can find to appear. To feel, to hear, to look, to see, to wait. So in this case, we're going to see the uh, meaning of this uh, mixed verb or the definition for them. So in the, in the case of uh, to appear is the number one. So to appear. We have the first example and it says Donna appears appears. And in this case, it's a non continuous verb. So here it says, Donna appears from here. And in this case, it's talking about that Donna seems from here. En este primer ejemplo, nos está diciendo que parece confundida o se ve confundida. So in this case, it's a non continuous verb. So in the second example, it says, my favorite singer is appearing at the jazz club tonight. My favorite singer is appearing at the jazz club tonight. So in that case, we are talking about normal verbs. So in this one, it says that my favorite singer is giving a performance of the jazz club tonight. So in this case, it's saying that we can see that person is doing something. In el primer ejemplo, vemos que Donna appears confused, parece confundida, luce confundida. Y en el segundo ejemplo, eh, mi cantante favorita o favorito aparecerá en el club de jazz esta noche y va a tocar, va a hacer algo físico. So in that case, it's depending on the context, so depending on the, the way in which we are going to write the sentence, that is the meaning that we can have in this case, non continuous or normal verbs. Then to have. The first one, I have a dollar now. I have a dollar now. In this case, it's non continuous. Non continuous verb. And in this case, it's talking about that I possess. I have a dollar in this moment. And the second example, I am having. I am having fun now. In this case, it's a normal verb. In this case, it's I am experiencing fun now. Estoy teniendo o me estoy divirtiendo. En este caso, se puede ver, ¿verdad? Que me estoy divirtiendo. Now, the third one is to hear. And we have the first example, and it says, she hears the music. This case is non-continuous. She hears the music. And in the second example, she is hearing a voice. That is a normal verb. 
So in this case, we're saying that in the first example, she hears the music. It says that she hears the music with the ears. It's escuchando con los oídos. And in the second example, it says she hears something others cannot hear. She is hearing the voices in her mind. En la segunda, pues ella está escuchando algo que nadie más puede escuchar. Está escuchando voces en su cabeza. So in that case, it's a normal verb that we can use with the ing form. Then we have to look. And we have the example. Nancy looks tired. And then we have the second one that it says, Sarah is looking at the pictures. And we have that this one is a normal verb. So in the case of the first sentence, we're saying that she seems tired. Se ve cansada. And in the second one, Farah is looking at the pictures. Es that she is looking with her eyes. Ella está haciendo la acción de ver a través de sus ojos. Por eso es un normal verb, because in that case, we can write it uh, with the ing form. And the last one, because it's almost time to end the session, is to me. And we have the first one that it says, John, Mr. Sally. And the second one, Debbie, is missing her favorite. Her favorite TV program. As always, the first one is the non continue. And the second one is the normal. Normal verb. So in the case, in the first sentence, it says the John misses Sally. He is sad because she is not there. And in the second one, she is not there to see her favorite program. So in that case, we can use the ING form. So tomorrow we are going to um, talk about the other verbs we have to see, to smell, to taste, to think, to wait. And also we are going to see some verbs that can be especially confusing in this case when we are talking about uh, the normal verbs or the uh, mixed verbs. And also we are going to see the other uses for the uh, structure that we are uh, learning now. But it's the present continue. So we are going to end the session now and we are going to see each other tomorrow. So. Have a good night. Bye bye, everyone. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night.